People are going nuts over the Create mod, which is both understandable and to be expected because the Create mod is actually really, really cool. If you want to make giant factories, steampunk looking things, Create is where it's at. It is a fantastic mod, and I look forward to getting into it at some point. But people seem to have forgotten about something else that came before Create that is sort of the spiritual predecessor of Create, and it is in 1.18 as well, and that is this. Immersive Engineering. Now, I've been playing with Immersive Engineering since 1.12, so it's been quite a while that I've actually been messing around with it. But there have been some updates to Immersive Engineering, and this particular update of Minecraft we should actually look at, and plus I've gotten a lot of people who have asked me how exactly this mod works. So, since I'm on vacation this week, we're going to do something a little bit different than we normally do, and we're going to look at the Immersive Engineering mod and sort of give you a starter guide to it. This is by no means a comprehensive guide to Immersive Engineering, by the way. This is just a starter guide to get you started with the mod and show you what everything that it is actually capable of. Step one, Coke. No, not that kind. So the first thing you're going to need to actually build to get into immersive engineering is going to be this right here. This is the Coke oven. Now, the Coke oven is actually pretty easy to put together if you go over and take a look at it. You need 27 of these, so basically you need nine sets of these, and all this really takes is some clay, some bricks, or some ash bricks if you want to do it that way, and then some type of sandstone in the middle. Now, this recipe is for all the mods seven, so I have seen slightly different recipes for what you need in the middle. As far as the stones, sometimes you're just, you can just use cobblestone, regular stones. Sometimes there's something specialized they've got in there. But this is fairly universal. So it's four clay balls, four bricks, and then something in the middle of some type of rocks, usually. So you need nine sets of those. So welcome to Immersive Engineering, the search for clay. That is the first step in this particular mod. It's a basically a three by three by three cube that you then smack with this thing right here, an engineer's hammer. And the engineer's hammer is also fairly easy to put together as well, as it just takes a couple of sticks, a couple of iron, and some string. So very simple to get into this mod very quickly once you have started your world. Once you have your 3x3x3 cube, you simply just smack it on any one of the sides with the hammer, and it will create the oven itself. Now, what do you cook in here? Well, the reason that you're doing this first is because you need two things that it actually will supply you. The first thing you're going to need is coal coke and that is a refined form of coal. Notice I've got some blocks of coal in here that are smelting up right now. They do take a while to smelt. However, you can also smelt logs and they will turn into charcoal. Blocks of coal will turn into blocks of coal coke, and coal will just turn into coal coke itself. Early on, you're probably just gonna be using this last one here, which is turning coal into coal coke uh, to give you a more refined type of coal. Now, the nice thing about coal coke is coal will smelt eight items, coal coke will smelt 16. So it's double as efficient as coal is. So you can use it as a fuel source to fuel your furnaces, to fuel some of your contraptions and machines. So it's nice to have just by itself. However, it also provides you with this stuff over here, creosote oil, which you are also going to need to get into this mod even more. Why do you need that? Well, with the creosote oil, once you've collected it from your coke oven here, you can use it to make what's called treated wood. Treated wood is made using any type of planks, and you can, literally any type of planks that you can find in the overworld or in the nether or in the end for that matter, depending on what kind of mod you're playing. Any kind of planks plus a bucket of creosote oil will give you these treated wood planks. Now, treated wood planks are important for immersive engineering because you can you basically build everything with treated wood planks and treated wood sticks. That every one of these recipes to make something in immersive engineering, whether it's a turntable, a water wheel, or a windmill, or a windmill blade, is going to take this treated wood planks and sticks to make these particular contraptions. Even things like a wooden post, we're going to take treated wood fence to make those. So anything that you want to make in immersive engineering, typically speaking, is going to take treated wood. So how do you collect the creosote once it's actually in here? Well, you've got a couple of different options. Notice there is a slot up here and a slot down here. You can put a bucket in this slot, and as soon as there is enough millibuckets of creosote to fill the bucket, it will move it to this output slot down here. Now, something to keep in mind is that as soon as this is filled right here, and it has a full bucket in it if you are not bucketing this out, once this fills, this will stop functioning. So you have to dump this out every single time that you want to 
make more cold coke. So it has to be constantly empty or else it's going to effectively freeze up. What I like doing rather than the bucket option is you can actually get a tank and then some type of fluid pipe and a wrench if you need it to have the fluid automatically taken out of your cold coke furnace and put into a tank. Here I'm just using a normal singularity tank from Rob Garden Utilities. There are a number of different tanks and tank mods out there. It's more than likely your mod pack will have something you can use that's like this, whether it's using the pipes mod, whether it's using mob grinding, or there's something else that you can use for it. You can probably find a tank or an ender tank or something like that to automatically transfer the creosote from the cold coke oven into the tank. And then as you need it, you can bucket it out and make your treated wood as necessary. So something to keep in mind, just make sure that when you check this occasionally, especially if you're just using regular coal, because coal blocks of coal take a long, long time to smelt down. Regular coal does not take that long, and it will fill this up rather quickly. So having something that will automatically offload all of the creosote into something like a portable tank that you can use and take with you for things later on would be useful. Once you've made yourself some treated wood, you want to make yourself some treated sticks, just in the normal way you make sticks, and some treated wood slabs. Once again, normal way you make slabs. You put those together with a crafting table to get your engineer's workbench, which by in and of itself is actually a very nice looking block. So it works really well as just like an end table or something like that, uh, as well as just being a very useful crafting table, because not only does it have the, the recipe in here, not only does it keep your recipe in here, but it has effectively like two thirds of a chest of storage. So in my Ultimod 7 world, for instance, what I do is I actually keep all of my ore hammers in this just so I know where they're at. So it's a neat little table in and of itself, but you're going to need this in order to go to the next, the next step, which is going to be this, your engineer's workbench. Because your engineer's workbench will take a piece of iron, a crafting table, two slabs, and treated wood fence to make the workbench. The workbench while it looks good, is also where you're going to put together all of your blueprints. So blueprints are important in immersive engineering because they allow you to make different things. Anything from normal circuits to tubes to copper wire and everything else that you're going to need for the power generation and block creation part of immersive engineering. So in here, notice that all of this is empty, but you can actually hit this to show recipes. And you can make things like, you can make banner patterns, you can make metal presses, uh, you can make bullet presses, which are gonna be important later, uh, packing molds, iron mechanical components, those are actually absolutely important later on, uh, up to and including things like graphite electrodes, cartridges, all of these different kinds of things that you can make that you're going to need to make some of the bigger blocks, circuit back panes, and so on and so forth. Now, something that's newer that some of you in that have been playing with immersive engineering for a while may not recognize is this right here, the circuit table. Now, the circuit table is a very is very interesting because it actually lets you change how circuits actually act. So you notice you've got set not, or, and this basically is creating different circuits that you can use inside of contraptions that you make, XNOR, NAND, or NAND, I guess. <laughs> so this is something that's a very interesting little circuit uh, creation tool that you can use to make different types of logic circuits that you can put into contraptions. So rather than using extensive redstone, rather than using comparators and repeaters and uh, sticky pistons, slime blocks, honey blocks to make complex, you know, uh, nors or and gates and everything that you'd normally do in vanilla Minecraft. This can actually make circuits that will do all of that for you. So you don't have to have some ridiculous redstone contraption hooked up to be able to do an and gate. You can just use it, use this tool over here to make one for you, which is pretty cool. So you've got your crafting table, you've got your workbench, and you've got your circuit table all built. Your coal coke oven is just smelting away over here, creating blocks of coal coke, or just regular coal coke, and creosote. So you've got everything pretty much kind of sort of automated, and now you're ready to actually get into immersive engineering. So you have to ask yourself, what does it do? Immersive engineering does a lot of different things. The first most obvious thing is this. This is a blast furnace built in almost the exact same way as your coke oven over here. So if you go take a look at blast brick, it's made. Now, once again, this is the all the mod seven version of this. So your mileage may vary depending on what mod pack you are playing that has immersive engineering in it. So 
Let's take a look at our Blast Brick. So Blast Brick in this particular mod pack is almost the same as the coal coke oven, except it's using magma blocks and nether brick instead of the regular clay and stone that we were using before. Once again, you need to make nine sets of these, set them up just like this, smack it with a hammer, and you'll make yourself the Blast Furnace. What does the Blast Furnace do? Well, notice with Blast Furnace has been running since I started this video here. We've got some coal coke in here, and we have some iron. What it's doing is it's refining this iron into steel, and it's making slag as a byproduct. Now, the steel, that should be pretty self-explanatory, what the steel does. If you go look at various different steel things in here, Whoa, if I can spell, that is. Steel, there we go. There's a lot of different things that you can do with steel inside all the Mod 7, and there's probably a lot of things you can do with it in your Mod Pack as well. You can make armor, which is fantastic. Like, look if you look at this armor, it's almost as good as diamond armor, which is really nice. Uh, you can make a steel jetpack. You can make uh, steel cable, steel tools, steel blocks and scaffolding, and... Tanks, like this tank is from Beyond Earth, but there are other things you can do with the steel as well. Steel rods, and steel is something that's going to be, that'll probably be a, something big for your particular mod pack, because steel is one of those types of materials that you see a lot of people using for a lot of different things inside of different mod packs. In all the mod 7, they're using it for the Beyond Earth mod, to make rocket ships to go to different places, uh, much like Galacticraft. Uh, Galacticraft itself uses steel. So this is a very good and early way to start mass producing steel for yourself. So you put coal in here, it makes coal coke. You take the coal coke out, move it over here, and it will smelt up your iron into steel. Note that only coal coke will work in this furnace. You cannot put any other type of fuel in here. It has to be coal coke in order to be able to have enough temperature to blast the iron into steel, I guess is the 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 story reason for it. All right, so you've got all your work tables, you've got your coke oven, you've got your blast furnace creating steel for you, which is fantastic. What else can you do with this? Well, these. So one of the things that you can do for early power generation within your mod pack, as long as you do have access to versive engineering, is either a windmill or a water wheel. These are actually surprisingly easy to make, but at the same token do take a lot of setup. So let me explain what I mean here. So in order to make the windmill, if you go over here and take a look at it, there's a number of different things that you have to do. So let's take a look at the windmill, for instance. So the windmill takes eight windmill blades and an iron ingot. To make a windmill blade, you need four sticks and three wooden planks. And then you can also make it more efficient by putting windmill sails on it. You don't have to, but it is helpful to actually have. So if you notice you can make these tough fabrics. These are made out of industrial hemp fiber and a stick. Very simple to make those. And usually industrial hemp fiber seeds are pretty much everywhere in any pack that's using immersive engineering. So getting them and getting them growing is not all that hard. So this is a great source of early power. Plus it just looks kind of cool. Like obviously I didn't really go, you know, all out for the windmill itself here, <laughs> but you can totally make any type. You can make like a Dutch windmill. You can make, you know, a, a windmill like you see out on the plains of the United States where they're doing all the wind farms. You could do that. You could do any number of different things with this because it is just such a cool looking thing. And then if you put sails on it, it gets even cooler. Each one of these, by the way, as you notice, is hooked up to something called a kinetic dynamo. The kinetic dynamo is your power generation tool in immersive engineering when you're talking about things like this. If you're using either a water wheel or a windmill. The kinetic dynamo, notice it does have spots on the top and on the back, and that is where your capacitors are going to go. In this particular case, it's going to be your low voltage capacitors. There they are, LV wire relay. Sorry about that. It took me a minute to actually find that particular thing. So LV wire relays and LV wire connectors. So that's what you're gonna be looking at to start with. So we'll just go ahead and drag that down and drag that down. And then we also need our wire itself, which to start off with is going to be this particular wire coil here. So it's gonna be the low voltage wire coils and relays. So if you put that, if you put the LV wire relay on here and then hook it up to something that requires power. So let's go find something that requires power real quick, which in this case is going to be just a typical powered lantern from immersive engineering. So we take wire and attach it there and then we attach it here 
Except we totally didn't because I used the wrong one. <laughs> I used the wire relay rather than the connector. So wire connector goes to there. Notice this is producing power because it is a, it's a windmill and it's, it's basically turning and creating uh, power through the kinetic dynamo, which is then being shipped over to our powered lantern. Now, the fun part is if I go into, hang on one second, if I go into survival mode, if I touch this wire, I get hurt. Why? Because it's an unshielded wire going from one electrical output source to an input source. So electricity hurts when you hit wires with it. <laughs> Just FYI. So you, you probably already knew that one, but they've actually translated it into Minecraft very well. If you touch open wires in immersive engineering, you will take damage and it will not feel good. And the same is true for our water wheel over here. It's the same exact setup, kinetic dynamo. Put the wire there to there and it tells you you can't do that because there's something in the way. So we have to basically have a relay that goes around it, which we can totally do by creating another post here that actually has this relay on top of it that can relay the, the power from there to there to our powered lantern and power it on. Now, uh, of course, the water wheel here that I've made is not creating a whole heck of a lot of power because it will create more power the more flowing water it has around it. So in other words, if you have flowing water that's going this way, and flowing water that's going this way, it will spin faster and create more power. The windmill, the windmill just kind of creates power on its own, just depending on you know how much power it actually generates. Um, so it, it really kind of depends on what you want to do. If you want to make water wheels because you want to have like a you know a, a riverboat base and you want the water wheels to be the power for it, you can totally do that. If you'd rather have like a giant wind farm outside your base because you like windmills, you can totally do that as well. It just kind of really depends on what you want to do. I've always wanted to make like an actual steamboat, like a Mississippi steamboat with a couple of these on it for power to power the whole steamboat with lights and everything. I think it'd look really cool. We might do that at some point, but that is how the power generation for this, this particular mod works. Now, is this all the power generation options? No. Not at all. There are a number of other different things that you can do for power generation in this particular mod that I'm not going into here. But these are the two that I see used the most because they're the most aesthetically pleasing and they're probably the easiest to set up too. And they'll give you enough power to power your base to start with. Now, is this going to be like in-game power? Not at all. <laughs> this is nowhere near as good as a nuclear reactor, a thermoelectric generator, or a magmatic generator, anything like that. It's not going to be as powerful as those. But it does give you a certain aesthetic if you are trying to get that particular aesthetic in your world, much as like what I'm trying to do in my current All the Mod 7 world. This is more aesthetically pleasing and fits the theme that I'm going with a lot more than, say, a giant nuclear reactor does. So both of these options are something that I'm looking into right now to actually build for my base and for my area to give it sort of a more Victorian Industrial Revolution kind of feel versus a very high-tech, you know, futuristic kind of feel. So these are the two that I see used most often with this particular mod. Now, there are a couple of other fun things that we can do that I'll go into very briefly here, but for the most part, this is a very good start to immersive engineering as far as your coke oven, your blast furnace, your workstations, and your power generation. But I am going to go into something else because it's just fun. And that is this, the rail gun. And that is exactly what it is too. So this is something that you build. This is definitely not a right away kind of thing. This is much more of an, an end game kind of weapon that you can use here. Because if you look at it, rail gun, it takes a lot of stuff. It takes electrum coil blocks, steel, an HV accumulator, wooden grip, and a circuit back plane. So like these in and of themselves take MV wire coil, which takes electrum wire. It takes a lot. Of, it's a very, very, very intricate craft. But what it does, though, <laughs> is makes things go away. <laughs> so, yeah, this this poor sheep over here who's going to be my test subject, yeah, he just goes away. <laughs> and it fires these rods. It fires steel rods or iron rods, and it just depends on what you're firing out of it as how much power it gets. But, yeah, it's it's pretty unhappy. <laughs> It just makes stuff vanish. So, yeah, in fact, I wonder... Let's see how truly horrifying this thing is. Five shots. 
Not bad, <laughs> considering how many bow shots it takes to take one of these guys out. Five shots from the railgun will take out your average pillager. That's pretty good. Now, herein lies the other problem with the railgun. It's now out of power. <laughs> so you get about a dozen shots with it, and then you've got to take it over to your charger, whatever your charger happens to be, and charge it back up again. I'm just using the charging station from Immersive Engineering. Uh, there's a couple of other charging stations that are usually in other packs, like Mechanism has its own charging station. Uh, there's a uh, standalone charging station in all the Mod 7. This one I'm using just because it came with Immersive Engineering. So once you've got it all charged, though, you can take it back out. And it's fully charged with 8,000 flux. So you get about 10 shots before you have to recharge it. So it's it's not a very practical weapon. Very cool, not very practical. But that's just been a very brief starter's look at immersive engineering. Of course, this wasn't a deep dive. Like I said, we're not going into every single block. We're not going into every single uh, potential relationship between the different blocks in there. This is just to give you kind of an idea of how the mod functions and how you can use it in your particular world as a power generation tool, as an element generation tool, or just for the aesthetics of it as far as the things like the windmills and the water wheels and other things that you can do with it. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope this has answered some of your questions about the mod itself. And I hope this has gotten you into a new mod if you've never actually tried one of these before. As I said, Immersive Engineering is sort of the spiritual predecessor to create, as you can probably tell just based on some of the blocks and some of the things that they do. But I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you liked it. Please, on the way out the door, leave a like and subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. And feel free to leave a comment or with any questions that you may have about Immersive Engineering or any of the other mods uh, that I may have gone over in some of my series over the last few months. And... By the way, I do this for fun, I do this for entertainment, I do this for my own personal enjoyment and to entertain all of you, so don't ever feel like you have to do anything you don't want to do when you're here watching videos on my channel. So if you want to like, subscribe, and comment, fantastic. If you just want to hang out and watch, that's perfectly fine as well. But whatever you do tonight, make sure you go out, play some games, have some fun. I'll see you all again real soon. Have a good night, everybody.